Hey, it's Alex from Board Game Co. And today we are talking about Northgard Uncharted Lands, a game, a Kickstarter that has, it was not on my radar at all, past the usual being on top of games that, you know, are available, past being on top of games so that I can cover them. This was just a, 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 a blip on my radar. It was like, oh, great, Northgard, date launching, great, I'll cover it. Now I've looked into it, and they have successfully gotten me interested not only in the board game, but also in the PC game. I want to get the PC game as well. This is ultimately based on an IP of a PC game. And I know I put out all these videos here and there where people will be like, why did you introduce me to this Kickstarter from six months ago? I didn't even know about it, and I backed it. It's payback time. Because right now, today, I believe I am about to back Northgard, and it's all your fault. Meaning this is not a game that I would have been aware of or would have been on my radar at all. The only reason I am backing this is because I had to look into it for the channel, and so it's basically your fault that I'm backing Northgard. This goes two ways, guys. It's two two way street here. You back things because of me, I back things because of you. We all lose out, the publisher's pretty happy, so it's a semi-win, I don't really know. Anyways, Northgard, should you back it? So, for those new to the channel, in general, I cover Kickstarters from a sense of a value proposition. Does it make sense to back this game now, or should you just wait to get it later at retail? Will this game hold its value? Will it not? If I don't like it, can I get my money back? Even if I do like it, could I have just waited and gotten it cheaper on the secondary market or retail? Those are questions that don't matter if you're backing one or two Kickstarters a year. But if, like myself and many others here, if you are backing 5, 10, 20, 50 Kickstarters a year, the numbers add up pretty quickly, and choosing the right Kickstarters can matter. With that being said, let's jump into Northgard. Northgard is a 4X game, very cutesy cartoony artwork, and before we jump into the cartoony artwork, I do want to point out here, I'm sure others have said, I'm sure others have seen this, but that is Captain America in the background right there. Look at that stone shield, that mask, that finger pointing, that is Captain America. Come on, come on. I mean, I mean I'm cool with it. I don't mind. I like Captain America, but I appreciated Captain America showing up, and he shows up a few times in the various artwork they produce here. Anyways, Northgard is a 2-5 player game, 13 plus years, but ignore that. Play it with whoever you think is suitable. 45 to 90 minutes, and this game to me feels like, strategic-wise, it feels like maybe Quest for El Dorado, meaning a good amount of choice, a good amount of decisions, a, a rewarding gameplay, but also light enough and short enough that it's easier to get to the table, that you can you can get to the table both with your game group, both with your lighter group, both with your family. This seems to have that good blend of accessibility. It's a Istanbul, Quest for El Dorado, Domain, Kingdom Builder. There's a host of games that fall into this category, and this looks like it will also fall into that category. And in terms of the, the artwork appeal, I mean, this game overall has a great visual appeal to it. While personally I'm not hugely pulled in by the tiles of the board, the, the miniatures have a cute cartoony look that seems to match the world that they're trying to build. The artwork on the cards is absolutely gorgeous. Let's see if we can find some cards here. The artwork in the cards, here's some, and you, you'll see more through the updates, and every time they release a new card, you'll see an exact card. So overall, great artwork from the cards. Really pulls you in, does a great job, very happy with it. And in terms of the gameplay, the gameplay is ultimately on your turn. You're going to be drawing four cards plus modifiers. Then you're going to go round and round and round with the players playing one card at a time. This is a deck builder. It's a little Concordia-ish, but it's a deck builder with a, a the twist that you don't take your entire turn all at once. This is actually going to be somewhat similar to the simultaneous play from Monumental. So overall, this, this is checking all the boxes for me. It's got area control. It's got combat. It's got production. Points. Well, points. I mean, many games have points. It has deck building, which I love. I compared it to Quest Belder out of for a reason. It has... A deck building with that play one card at a time, which really, it really forces you to choose not just what deck to build, but in what order to take your actions. Do I move my units here? Will I still be able to do what I wanted when it loops back to me? There's lots of choices. It's a good blend of accessibility and strategy, seemingly. I say seemingly because I obviously haven't played, not obviously, I haven't played it, and therefore, ultimately, I'm just making judgment calls here. I'm just making my own judgment calls about whether this looks like a game that I am interested in. And by all accounts, it is a game that I am interested in. Simple, accessible, combat is, you know, quick and punishing, but also easy to recover from. It does look like the kind of game that I would enjoy. It looks like it would fit very well into the kind of game that I can easily get to the table, as opposed to some of these giant Kickstarters that I love, make no mistake. But sometimes some of these big, gigantic boxes are just hard to play. And it doesn't matter what the value proposition is on a game that sits on your shelf. It only matters if you're playing it or if you're selling it, so sitting on your shelf is not doing anyone any favors. 
With that being said, let's jump into the pledge levels. The pledge levels in this game are pretty simple. Now, before we get into the complicated pledge level, not complicated, but the basic pledge levels, let's talk about the basic pledge level over here of one euro to get access to the pledge manager. They are going to have a pledge manager. You can upgrade your pledge, so feel free to back at one euro, but don't necessarily skip the campaign relying on a late pledge. As of now, they have no specific plans to have a late pledge. They may or may not. So even if it's just for a euro, if you are pretty sure you want in and you just don't want to lay out the money now or you want to wait and see how things develop, back it at a euro so you have that access locked in as opposed to waiting until it's possibly too late. In terms of the pledges, we have a 50 euro or $59 warrior edition pledge shipping to the US on these pledges around 8 to $12 depending on which pledge you're looking at. I think it might have been 10 to $12 and it's going to vary Across the board, they had pretty decent shipping rates depending on where it was. They had some higher, but overall shipping rates were pretty decent, relatively. In terms of the Warrior Edition Pledge, the Warrior Edition Pledge is going to give you the, what's it called, the basic box of what you get here. Now, it's worth noting, if you are American, uh, then or depending on where you're from, you're likely going to see be hit with various... Um, currency fees, meaning in terms of when you actually back it, add a few bucks for whatever currency conversion hits your credit card. In terms of if you are international and you have to deal with any form of VAT tax or whatnot, those things you have to account for as well. So add those in addition to the shipping to whatever the cost is to get a full picture of what it's going to cost you. This Warrior Edition pledge is going to get you, uh, well, everything you see here. A whole bunch of cards, 73 action cards, 30 starting, 43 in the common development deck that you'll be building your deck out from, that you'll be expanding your deck. We have the first player token, fame tokens, building tokens. These buildings all have different effects for the game. Custom dice, 60 resource tokens. The resource tokens look a little weak. I'm hoping they'll be upgraded throughout the course of the campaign. They, I mean, they're basically just a picture with a number on it. That doesn't seem super satisfying, but hey, we have 35 days to go, so that's plenty of time to see how things play out. And then we have 35 map tiles, 10 unrest cards, 1 kaija token, which I have no idea what that does, 15 clan cards, and then from there we get to the 70 euro, or roughly $80 or so, a little more than 80 I think, $82, for the War Chief Collector's Edition. Now, what do you get here? So, first of all, you get a Kickstarter exclusive game box. We're going to come back to that Kickstarter exclusive soon. As well as that, you get the five War Chiefs miniature. This is a module you can play with. The clan upgrades, the bases for your War Chiefs, the colored dice for which to replace the warrior, the five modular player boards and clan boards, the turn tracker, and what's new in the War Chief Edition? We have a bigger box, a new module, additional and upgraded components. Additionally, and this is a stretch goal, we're going to come back to the stretch goal shortly, in both pledge levels we have the Creatures of Northgard expansion. The Creatures of Northgard expansion is a kind of a PvE element to the game, player versus environment, that's going to add these creatures to the game so that you have to take, basically fight them or deal with them and whatnot. And they come with standees, sort of. I saw this right away and I, my first thought I saw this was, oh my gosh, they're definitely going to update that. And unfortunately I was too late, they've already started updating these standees to miniatures. So these standees are all going to be miniatures before the campaign ends. No worries about that, and we'll talk more about that. So, should you back it? Should you not? Let's take a step back for a minute. Before we get to the should you back it, should you not, let me first say how much I appreciate what they did with this campaign. Nothing to do with the gameplay itself, but I like transparency, I like directness, and I like what they did on this campaign. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, we have this whole section down here, which talks about stretch goals. It says about stretch goals, and it addresses the concept that stretch goals are ultimately either a game or they're, meaning if you don't plan your stretch goals, then it, there's going to be an, a lack of balance in your game. And if you plan your stretch goals, then ultimately they're a game. And so they said straight up what they are going to be doing, which I strongly appreciated, which is they said, we've designed everything already. Either you'll unlock it through stretch goals because of economies of scale, or we're going to charge you for it in the PM. Your choice. They were directly transparent about the nature of the lie of stretch goals, but also managed to still say, still unlock them. Either you pay for them or unlock them, your choice. And this is something I've wondered a lot about. I don't have any knowledge of this whatsoever, but I know whenever, let's take Star Starcadia Quest from Kaman. I know that when they had Starcadia Quest and it definitely wasn't hitting the numbers they wanted, I often wonder how much they have some of these stretch goal add-on characters waiting there with a little fake packaging so that they can say, you know what, these 10 characters were going to be stretch goals, but we'll just put it on as a paid add-on instead to boost the numbers and we'll still have those, those assets that we've created will be utilized. And don't get me wrong, I have no problem with that. I think it's a great idea. I think if you're going to create content that is designed to both be extra but balanced, then it should be designed, it should be available. But what happens if you don't see the funding levels you want? 
Well, then doing what they say they're doing here, saying we're making it either way, but you can either buy it or you can unlock it. I love that. I think they took it a drop too far in the sense that they're slowly unlocking miniatures for the, they are slowly unlocking miniatures for, let's go scroll up a bit, for the, where are we here? Nope, 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 nope. Here we go. They are slowly unlocking miniatures. We so far have the wolves unlocked. We have the draugers are about to be unlocked, which leaves a total of, I believe there are eight total monsters to be unlocked. And we have two, well, four different types of monsters in that, in that expansion or whatnot. Four different types of monsters. Here we go. Yeah, we have one, two, three, four different types of monsters in that expansion. One's already unlocked. The other one's about to be unlocked. And in the updates, they're like, oh, don't worry. If we don't unlock all of them, you can you can buy the extra ones as an add-on. That's It's taking it a bit too far. We're going to unlock all of them. We don't need to play that charade of trying to figure out which ones we'll unlock. But in terms of the concept in general, the concept of we have content planned, either fund the heck out of this thing or some of the stuff will be available as add-ons, I love the transparency, I love the directness, I, I, I am a huge, huge fan of that. As far as retail, and this is a big one when they talk about the value proposition, as of now, they currently said that they have no specific plans, where is it? Nope, 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 again, I'm saying a lot of nopes here. Why Kickstart? Again, transparency, they did a great job here. Why Kickstart? To begin with, for common to all Kickstarters, supports the project, helps them succeed. That's great. I, I acknowledge that that is a good reason to back things. It's not the reason I back things because there are so many campaigns to back. And ultimately, Kickstarter is a choice. The fact that we have moving more and more games are being moved to Kickstarter instead of traditional retail distributions, that is the publisher's choice. And as much as I value supporting publishers, as much as I value that, I mean, how often do you just cut a check directly to the publisher? Usually you back the game. Why? It kind of seems like you want something, in which case then it's a value question. In any case, for those who want to support the publisher, great. For me, that's not my priority most of the time. In terms of the stretch goals will be upgraded to components for the game's exclusive, some of the stretch goals will be upgrades to components of the game exclusive to this Kickstarter. So that's a good reason. We'll have to see what that is, exactly what's covered. We will offer, offer valuable stretch goals, such as the Creatures expansion. That's great, but the Creatures expansion with the minis does compensate a bit for the shipping costs versus the retail costs, but it's hard to make the determination. And this is the big one. At this stage, we don't have any firm plans to release the game in retail stores. And should the standard offer be available in retail stores, they'll be delivered after we've shipped them to backers. So they're doing two things here. They're incentivizing you with FOMO. This may not be available in retail. And I'm, I'll tell you, it it works. It FOMO works. I, I'm a little interested in this game, and I, I want to back it now because it might not be available in retail. Additionally, they're saying you'll get your game earlier, which is less of a value to me because... Until I have no unplayed games on my shelf, why is this one so special? I mean, it is because it's Kickstarter and it's in front of my face, so it is so special. But rationally, logically, why is this game so much more exciting than the many unplayed games on my shelf? So getting games early isn't a value to me. Getting games now because this might be my best bet is. Which brings us to should you back it. There are no easy answers here. This is similar to Daimyo, it's similar to a few Kickstarters I've covered in the past. When a publisher basically says, similar to Roll Cam, which I covered, when a publisher has no retail plans, that means you have to make a decision. It means you have to sit there and decide for yourself, are you willing to risk it? Because I trust them, I'm not saying they're lying, I don't think that at all, but there's a difference between we don't have plans versus, hey, we're totally willing to, we just haven't gotten around to it yet. I am being pulled in by that FOMO because I don't believe the value is that bad. I don't believe it's amazing, but we do have 35 days left to see how it unfolds and unlocks. As of right now, I am not backing it, or I should rephrase that. As of right now, I'm backing it at one euro just so that I'm in, just so that I have access so that if in case I forget, I'm, I'm locked in, they can have my euro, that part I'll support the creators, it's totally fine. But I do want to see how the campaign develops. As of right now, we're getting stretch goals, but they're doing one of those things where you unlock a single card every 5,000 euro. I mean, that's it's not it's totally inspiring when you have that level, and that card's not even Kickstarter exclusive. I mean, the whole game might be. We'll see how that plays out. But they said we're going to have an ex Kickstarter exclusive um, sleeve on the box. What's the point of saying we're going to have a Kickstarter exclusive sleeve if the whole game is not going to retail at all? That's a bit of a... a question mark there and the answer is kind of well one's a guarantee and one's you know who knows but still it lends the question that they are definitely keeping their options open otherwise just call the whole thing kickstarter exclusive so the fact that they're keeping their options open means i do believe 
this will hit retail. The campaign's doing decently well. There's no reason for it to, to not to be picked up or not to be distributed. I believe it will probably hit retail at some point. So as far as should you back it, for $82, let us look at the War Chief Collector's Edition. For $82 plus $12 shipping, assuming you're in the US, you're basically looking at that's $94 to get this. I mean, you're getting, let me see if I can pull up the components here. For all of that, you're getting this, okay? You're getting the Warrior Edition, all of these components, all of this content. You're getting the War Chief Edition, plus this little expansion here. For this kind of cost, for this level of, uh, for that much money, you could buy Blood Rage plus Mystics plus uh, Gods of Asgard. And you'll still be getting a game. You'll be getting a game that's one of the one of the best games of all time. My personal favorite game of all time. You'll be getting a game that has proven itself that you're not taking a risk on, and has more content. So it depends on what you want out of Kickstarter. It depends on what you want to do. I'm pulled into this game. I am very interested in it. And yet, currently, I just don't believe the value is there. I believe the FOMO is there. That's for darn sure. But I don't believe the value is there. Now, the second part, and this is something I've talked about with Dead Reckoning, which is a game that I'm backing, even though I've expressed concerns about the value, which the publisher did make a note, so we'll see how that plays out. But sometimes, if I if I know I like a game, then I don't mind making decisions. If I if I played this game, if I played Northgard Uncharted Lands and I enjoyed it and I liked it, then I wouldn't care about the value question as much. I would say, hey, I don't know if I'm going to see it, so I'm jumping in, even though I think it's overpriced. But I haven't played it. I just think I'll like it. So as of right now, for myself, I'm currently putting it in a Euro, and I'm waiting to see how things develop. Like I said, those stretch goals at, at, at unlocking a card every five, I mean, where's it going to end up? Where's this campaign going to end up? Sure, they've done pretty well in the first few days. $129,000 in the first few days. This might hit, what, two fifty, three hundred if it does really well? In general, you, if you ever pay attention to kick, kick track, the way it works is you see a huge spike on the first two days, and then a small little trend as at least people slowly crawl in the rest of those 35 days. And then towards the end, you see another spike. So this might very well end up in 250, 300. Right? Unlocking a card every 5K won't do it in terms, of, in terms of bringing this to where it needs to be from a value stance. So like I said, I am interested. I am backing at a Euro, but I'm not committing just yet. I want to see more. I believe it'll show up in retail. I haven't played this game and I need to make a decision based on the fact that I think I'll like it rather than the fact that I like it because I don't yet. I just think I'll like it. As far as what you should do, honestly, I think it's kind of the same thing. Ask yourself whether you can live without this. Ask yourself whether this is a game that you need to have or whether this is a game that you want to have. Ask yourself whether this is a game that you would pay $92, $94 for if it was on the shelf in front of you with all this stuff. And if the answer is yes, jump on in by all means. But otherwise, you're buying an, a fairly untested product at a fairly decent price for a decent but not amazing amount of content. And that, that is Kickstarter in a nutshell. Again, I am very interested in this game. I'm going to start repeating myself at this point. I'm interested in this game. I'm holding off because I think the value needs to be proven throughout the campaign. And lastly, I will note, note thanks to one of my viewers who pointed this out, which I was going to comment the other way around, but they pointed it out. But this, while you might think this is their first Kickstarter campaign, it is not their first Kickstarter campaign. Sorry, it is their first Kickstarter campaign as a company, but the, the designer the, the, over here, first Kickstarter of his company, uh, this Zach over here asked about this, Zach ZB10 for whatever it is, ZB1035. Uh, Jim mentioned the owner is... is I'm not going to try to pronounce that. The ex-founder of Matago Editions. So this is the founder. He's been. Uh, he's, he's the ex-founder of Matago. He has done. The he's been in the industry. He knows what he's doing. This is a, from a new company, but not a new experience. And that definitely is a fact that you should take into account. In terms of the publisher, not the publisher, the designer. The designer does have some games under his belt. But they're not particularly well rated. If you look at uh, Adrian D uh, Dino, he's done more. Mo mo I can't do it. Um, why? Moi, Mo, Ma, Maui, Maui. There we go. I knew this. I knew I knew this word. I'm telling you guys, it's very hard being me. He's done Maui. He's done Aliens. He's done Scarret. Uh, but anyways, he's done a few games. But ultimately, those games aren't tremendously well rated. They're okay rated, and you have to factor that into your decisions. No disrespect to the designer. I hope this is the breakout. I hope this is the one that that takes it to the next level. But you're risking that on something that has a decent but not amazing value proposition. So again. To, to wrap that all up, 
I think this game looks super cool. They have done a great job of making me interested in the game, making me interested in the PC game. They have done a great job with the world building. Overall, I am very impressed with what they are trying to deliver here. I am less impressed by the price, and that is why I am in for a Euro while I watch the campaign develop. Ultimately, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always interested. Are you backing it? Are you not? Did I miss something? Did I miss some phenomenal aspect of to why this really should be a game you back now? Or are you just all in because sometimes you just got to go with your heart? And maybe that's today. I don't know. I mean, I, I feel Dead Reckoning was my uh, one less responsible back for the month right now. So we'll see how that plays out. There's only so many others I can do. Past that. I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was in some way helpful. It's definitely a tough one for me. This, this did not make my life any easier. I am very interested, but we'll see how it plays out. Until next time, you can subscribe down below, ring the bell for notifications. I will cover this in my roundups. Any relevant updates to this one, I will cover it. It's definitely one I'm going to be following. So if you want to see more updates as to what happens with the campaign, subscribe down below. So every Monday I put up a Kickstarter roundup video and I will likely talk about this game as it develops. Until next time, have a good one.